Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a replay um, of the newest tier 10 light tank in the game, the premium MPF light tank. Um, we will take a look at the clip, uh, or take a look at the replay, I mean, um, look at the results, and then I will give you my opinion on this light tank and whether or not you should uh, use your money on it. So without further ado, let's jump into my setup. I'm using Ophelia because of her shield, using a little bit more AP than Heat for the simple reason that there's a lot of 490s in the current meta. Um, I used super hard kill APS because that's literally always the best pick. Like you, you could get yourself defense as well, but that's not worth getting if you have super hard kill. Also, the I run double repair kits and energy drink for more DPM because I have a loader. As you can see, it's almost 9k. And then for retrofits, I use improved power lining for reload. Muscle system for accuracy. A little bit of view range because the base view range is pretty... I mean, it's pretty good for MBT standards, pretty poor for light tank standards. So you kind of need the optics for your view range to be valid. And also, same with mobility. The top speed is very nice, but the, the acceleration going up to 95 is actually pretty poor. That's why I run filter systems. Um, for commander skills I run, uh, accuracy and off-road acceleration, max spread, aim speed, rate of fire and module damage, which is pretty nice with the heat rounds because it means you can usually track people in one shot. Then without further ado, let's dive into the replay. So here we are loading in on waterway, as you can see I'm playing with my buddies Mike and Indigo. And it is a tier 10, tier 9 matchup. So here we are loading into the game, um, usually on this map I like to go to the city in MBTs or MBT light tanks, uh, we'll, come to, we'll come back to as to why I play the MPF in this particular way afterwards, um, but yeah in, the, in this battle I'm playing the MPF very much like a support MBT. Because the MPF is kind of fast, as you can see, I don't really have any problems keeping up with the ZDQ. I want to try and go to the middle first. Because I kind of want to see if I can catch some people off guard crossing that bridge. So, like this is a risky play because if they have anybody there you can watch them. I spotted the Charlie, but it wasn't fast enough to actually have a shot. And at this point I'm kind of paranoid because I kind of expect them to come from there, so I just drive into the city. But I don't want to go alone as my team is very much still in the beginning of the city, so... I just drive back a little bit. That's one downside of this tank, it doesn't turn very well. But like straight line speed is okay. Uh. It was kind of a waste of my super hard kill APS there. This is only to one shot from the challenger. Here you can see both Mike and me pushing because we kind of noticed that these are alone. So what I do is I go closest because I actually have a little bit of armor. And that's how we easily take down the challenger. Next, Leclerc. 
and for that one I actually load heat because I know I will have his back. That's a juicy 700 damage roll. So now I'm looking at the map and I'm seeing a 195 and an MPF in the middle. And I want to try and do something about it. So again, I load the because I have the back. And I also set up on fire because of that. Heat shells do extra module damage and also have a higher chance of doing fire. Uh, when hitting certain modules. Yeah, I was lucky I just shot that the APS uh, disappeared. But yeah, these heat rounds are very effective indeed against likely armor targets or rears and backs of turrets and tanks. As you can see, the thing also has adjustable suspension. Got stuck a little bit back there, but it's not too bad. Here I'm noticing the campus in the back there. First shot. The accuracy on this gun is it's not the worst, but it's definitely not the best either. So you're gonna have to expect missing some shots on range. This scenario is actually not as easy as it may look because there's a double ghost and a PL in the field, which are gonna be kind of hard to outspot even with an MPF. Target spotted. Awful, hey. spot my counterpart on the enemy team. Whenever I'm shooting MPFs, I usually like to load AP because there's big weak spots against AP than there is against E. As you can see, I'm aiming at the rear of the side because that's where the weakest armor is. And in the meantime, I've activated my heart. There are the merc shots around the door. And the poor merc didn't even pen me once. As you can see, Manira plates are both yellow. That's because both of the Manira plates have been hit once. Yeah, the corner pen me with one missile, but one got taken down by my APS. And that's where the plate's red, so at this point, everything is gonna pen my lower plate, except for like small auto cannons. So the way to counter this thing is very much you just shoot it on the multi multiple times on the lower plate and then it's just paper and you can it every single time. Yeah, I'm actually playing quite poorly because the ghost, the ghost is actually doing a very good job hitting me every single time. What I think happened there is my hole was at too steep of an angle so he could actually pen my upper plate. And just like that you get 13.6k damage. And I don't really get to do anything else in this game. So let's go back to the garage and watch the results. So here we are back with the results. The final score was 13.6k damage and 5 kills. Um, that resulted in a first place in the team and also 2.6k uh, experience, which is pretty decent to be honest. Do keep in mind that with these numbers I'm running both a premium account and I think I also had a booster running as well as the fact that this is a premium tank. So 
these uh, numbers are a little bit higher than you would probably get on a normal battle. So that's about it for that battle. So the MPF light tank, what, what is it about and why, why is it in the game to begin with? So the, the real thing with this light tank is the fact that it combines a super hard kill APS with uh, non-explosive reactive armor. As we can see, show the Nera. So what we're pretty much looking at is there's an extra plate on the front, an extra plate on the side, and each of the turret cheeks are also Nera. What this effectively means is you have a lot more armor against pretty much any sort of round. So both AP and especially heat, like against heat it's multiple, like it's just impenetrable at any angle. However with AP, like I said, there's more weak spots with AP than with heat, especially if you're side on. The AP should hit a lot more and pen a lot more. Um, the tank does have weak spots. If you look at the little uh, drive wheels here, if we look at the model, that's this little wheel and this little wheel. Also, if you're shooting at the side, the rear is, of course, a weak spot. The side of a turret is a pretty obvious weak spot. And that's actually relatively thin as well, so if you're shooting AP, you don't really need a lot of an angle in order to be able to pen that. And you also have like a big chance of hitting MRX and stuff. Um, the side is a little bit different of a story because all of these plates are Nera packages. Meaning they uh, aren't really penned as easily. Something that you have to know about this tank is the fact that the whole lower plate is one big Nera plate, meaning that if you hit it with, you, you have to hit it with AP because the heat is only going to do chip damage, meaning it's not going to break the Nera plate as fast. But if you hit it with an AP round, say for example this 850 pen 600 damage round, you hit it once, it becomes yellow, you hit it twice and it becomes red, and the third time it will always pen. Because Look at this, when the Nera is gone, even the turret becomes panable at an angle, and the lower plate is just green everywhere. Also, the sides, of course, if the Nera is gone, it's completely uh, green against any ammo type. So, if you don't want to bother having to shoot at little weak spots, hit the lower plate twice with AP and it should be fine. Something to notice as well is the fact that the turret of the um, MPF is actually not as strong as it may look. Because this is a Leo's upgraded 900mm pen round and actually has a 60% chance of going through. Also means if you're facing MGMs with an MPF, an MGM is going to always be able to shoot the turret and the gun and pen you relatively easily. So that's something to be aware of. Also a challenger with its pitch rounds. A lot of the MPFs will actually be driving downwards with their hole like this. Meaning that if it's face hugging you, you can actually shoot the upper plate here and pan relatively reliably. Also do quite a lot of like module damage and stuff. Um, overall, I mean, I really like this tank. Um, the the main key factor for me is this is a light tank I can kind of play like an MBT. Um, and also the fact that um, it has good DPM, it's kind of the same DPM as a Ghost with its big 120mm gun. It's, it's pretty much got a little bit of everything and quite a bit of everything to be honest as well. Like it's got better DPM than pretty much every single tier 10 MBT. It's got armor and defense mechanisms that are pretty much on par with tier 10 MBTs. Speed, I mean the top speed is higher than most, but the acceleration is a little bit lackluster. So a 640 or 490 will accelerate faster than you. 
And then you have the very good view range, which, which beats all of the MBTs. And also some pretty good gun characteristics. Like I said, the accuracy is not insane, so like you will miss shots at range. But especially for the close range brawls that this thing is made for, it works perfectly fine, in my opinion. Um, would I pay 90 bucks for this? Uh, no. Um, I would try, I would wait and see if it becomes cheaper at any point or if it is obtainable in the next battle path in a battle path shop. But would I want this tank in my garage? Uh, definitely. However, a disclaimer, I think this tank is going to be nerfed. Um, and the reason why is because I think um, people are going to complain too much about this Nera armor and the fact that it has just very small weak spots, even though it's relatively easy to counter by just shooting the lower plate twice. And also, like if, if the tank is over angled, there's actually quite a bit of weak spots to be found on the side as well. Um, if I were to balance this tank, because I actually do own the tank and I've played like 60 battles in it now, I would say if they would make this drive wheel a weak spot, also under this angle, not just like this, but like under any angle, if they make the drive wheel a weak spot, I would say this tank is fixed. Because the, the main issue is when this tank is standing like this, you have this little, very small target to shoot at. Or that very small target to shoot at, which is a very hard shot, and which is actually a smaller weak spot than pretty much every MBT in the game currently. Um, I would not want to lie, uh, want to see them having the entire lower plate weak spot like a typical MBT does, because that kind of takes away from the specialness of this vehicle. Also, what they could do is they could extend this weak spot all the way up to the top and all the way to, up to the top there. Um, yeah. So, as it is now, it is probably my favorite tier 10 light tank, um, simply because of the fact that it plays like an MBT and I like MBT playstyles. Um, I would say it is fun enough to get your hands on, but I wouldn't pay full price for it. And also, I do fear that this thing is going to get nerfed, if not in the near future, at least in the distant future. Um, so, that was about it. I hope um, this was useful, that you enjoyed the replay, if so drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. See you next time.